Okay, so you know the ideas that I have with regards to July and the second half of the summer, based on the sea surface temperatures around the UK and Ireland at the moment being super warm, uh, there is great potential for the summer to go either way. We continue to have high pressure uh, dominating the rest of the summer and we end up turning into 2018 summer or even a 1976 summer or we see a flip around taking place. This is the CFS V2 for the month of July upcoming. So you notice here that we do have the strongest heights over the Baltic region and negative to the west of the UK and Ireland, which is quite interesting. And of course, we have um, a wetter than average July. This would certainly go very strongly with the ideas I have for the upcoming July and indeed the, the broader term forecast also. And of course, with... Um, very warm sea surface temperatures. I think you'd be silly to go for a below average July. So thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. Of course, a lot of um, excitement, fear mongering, you know, with regards to the exceptional warm waters. There's no getting away. Like I say, that like I've, I've kind of harped on for, for quite a while recently. There's no getting away from the, the level of warmth um, in the Atlantic Ocean at the moment here. Yeah, is it a bit unnerving? I suppose it probably is, actually. Uh, but um, looking at some uh, stuff coming out of both mainstream media, social media, and whatnot, how do we know that the water temperatures are, you know, have not been as crazy warm, you know, you know, in, in hundreds, if not thousands of years before now? That is the big argument that I have, folks with regards to this uh, situation, because the climate change debate has just reached fever pitch in recent days, thanks to the amount of uh, of publicity that's been drawn. I personally struggle with the whole carbon dioxide is the cause of this. Uh, you know, if I actually look back, you know, between... Um, particularly so May and, the, you know, through the first 20, 21 days of June... High pressure displaced to the north means a lack of weather, uh, increased sunshine, lack of cloud cover. Lack of wind means that you're warming that surface of the ocean at a higher latitude than typically you would expect to see. So therefore, we warm the temperatures to the levels. Not outrageous, not off the scale, not warmer than we've ever seen before, but simply we're shifting the warmest waters for the time of the year forward a couple of months based on weather patterns not anything other than the atmosphere dictating the ocean in my opinion further south why is the waters in the subtropical and tropical atlantic as warm as they are because of a lack of high pressure in that region that usually means that we drive a strong north to northeasterly trade wind or east to northeasterly trade wind through the Canary Islands, typically cooling them down, but also the water temperatures. And also that drives down into the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. It's not until, you know, in the August, in the September, that you start to lose the, the, the strength of the trade winds. Those trade winds migrate a little bit further north, further north. And then you warm the waters up. It's simply atmosphere dictating ocean, in my opinion. Could be shot down in flames for that i don't know and of course we are also seeing the same situation going off in the baltic sea as well so this is a tweet a few days ago by dr simon lee very nicely describes the atmosphere the last day uh, what month nearly two months so this is the, the 18th of may through the 18th of june so a month and of course you've had strong region over the uk and ireland so there's no surprise that the water temperatures are above average very above average yes you could argue you know off the scale we've never seen it before blah 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 but you can understand why we've warmed the temperatures around the uk and ireland here is simply because of the persistence of that area of high pressure we've got near dry conditions that are now easing slightly over the northern half of the british isles parts of north wales and also in the scandinavia we've got very dry conditions as well but of course, with that area of high pressure that should be down over the north of Africa, over Spain and Portugal, and of course, a nice strong easterly trade wind blowing around that area of high pressure, keeping the, the waters uh, cooled, 
with upwelling. With a lack of trade wind, that means that all that strong incoming solar radiation with a lack of wind means that we're warming the surface up. It's simple as that. Now, I just want to get my point across because some of the stuff that I'm seeing is, is a bit out there, to be honest with you, with regards to CO2 and, and whatnot. Back in January, the water temperatures were not as anywhere near as warm as this. If it was as warm as they are now, you know, from last summer all the way right through the winter and all the way through till now, I would be more concerned by that. So it, it you know, it's a, uh, it, it's, it's very interesting, but also at the same time, you can start to get a wee bit fed up with it. You don't, I don't know about you. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, where the waters have been warmest, and of course where the air has been warmest, thanks to a lack of weather, we've got it. Anywhere from the Cape Verde all the way up to uh, the Northeast Atlantic. Now, of course, that pattern become a little bit more established during the month of May. And, of course, air temperature reflects the sea surface temperature. So the atmosphere res responds to the sea surface. And then the sea surface responds back to the atmosphere. That's simply what we're getting at the moment. And, of course, the month of June, where waters are warmest, you've got, of course, warmer than average air temperatures and that is what you would expect to see during the month of july and indeed probably august as well what will be interesting is do we start to remove some of this energy that's stored up in the ocean surrounding the uk in in the in terms of lowering the heights well certainly according to the cfsv2 latest anyway we have that negative uh, to the west of the uk and ireland here so it it, it it's tapping that warm um atmosphere our ocean into the atmosphere and that, that may correlate to wetter than average conditions across the UK and Ireland here. What's the month of August looking like off the CFSV2? Kind of, you know, kind of 50-50 with regards to either wetter or drier than average. It's quite interesting here. And then it wouldn't surprise me if we started to see a fairly wet autumn as all this um, as the air starts to cool and of course you've got all that warm waters surrounding the UK and Ireland here so also an interesting point that I didn't bring up and I never actually thought of this if I'm being quite honest with you is the Saharan dust the lack of Saharan dust which also tends to uh, limit the increase uh, you know in, in incoming solar radiation so that you know when you've got a lot of strong trade winds so again it correlates to that high also correlates to the, the trade winds blowing around the, the base of those areas of subtropical high pressure that cools the atmosphere but also the, the saharan dust that blows off the continent across the atlantic that tends to have an impact on the level of incoming solar radiation as well so that's quite interesting. This is an interesting tweet here by Anthony Masiola. Ma Masiola or, um, sorry, uh, my pronunciations are shocking, aren't they? But this is actually an interesting tweet here uh, that shows the lack of wind through the tropics, uh, subtropics, and indeed the high latitudes uh, in recent years as well, which can be a massive contributing factor to the amount of warmth that we're seeing also um in in the system as well and of course we've uh, I seen this tweet here by mika uh, rantanen and shows that not only the north atlantic uh, which is experiencing the marine heat wave the ongoing atmospheric heat wave has warmed the baltic sea clearly warmer than normal such situations has been common in recent years and uh, i go on to say that uh, yeah the same cause of the marine heat wave in the atlantic is the cause in the baltic sea strong high pressure lack of cloud Lack of wind means strong incoming solar rays on the, the sea surface for a prolonged period of time. So, uh, yeah, I think the CFSV2 is going quite nicely with the overall ideas that I've got for the month of uh, of uh, July. That's for sure. I'm quite pleased with how that is looking. And we'll wait and see what happens, whether I'm wrong and high pressure remains the dominant player. Or do we see um you know the continuation of high pressure and um, that will be the golden question now let's have a look at this the, the gfs ensembles this is the 500 millibar height anomalies here and you can see here that as we skip through the sequence there's that negative trying to dig southwards over the british isles here uh, flattening the overall pattern uh, generally that means to say that we're going to have 
the likelihood is that we're going to have more westerly influence as we step out of the month of June into the month of July. So certainly no major heat wave to speak about as we begin the month of July. The question is, do we maintain this type of setup as we progress through the month? And certainly as we continue to play through the month of uh, early July, it looks as if the GFS Ensemble doesn't have any major high over the UK or Ireland here um, as we go through the period here. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna, it's a kind of short and sweet video today, actually. Uh, we will look more in the Global Weather and Climate Report with regards to what's happening uh, elsewhere around the planet with regards to sea surface temperatures, the El Nino, the Indian Ocean Dipole. We also, of course, have two features over the Atlantic at the moment that um, is uh, going to be um, going to be you know causing quite a lot of stir actually in the next uh, wee while here. Well, of course, we've got the uh, tropical storm Brett expected by the National Hurricane Center to then move into the Caribbean, probably fade as it enters an area of enhanced shear within that region here. And also we have a feature that is following tropical storm Brett. And that may become, um, I believe Cindy would be the next name. I'm not seeing any new tweets by the National Hurricane Center, but that would likely become a uh, tropical storm Cindy. So, uh, yeah, interesting times. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Please like, share and subscribe, of course. And in the coming days, I will be talking a little bit about my early winter thoughts. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.